Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we are here because of the unfolding uprising in Palestine that is happening on almost to the day, the anniversary of the Nakba, when 73 years ago, Israel established itself on a state, as a state on indigenous Palestinian land, as a result of hundreds of massacres and the ethnic cleansing of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians, creating the world's largest refugee population. And it's tried for the last 73 plus years to erase, to kill off Palestinians, to erase their identity. And despite this, despite 73 years of massacre and erasure backed by the world's largest military powers time and again, Palestinians remain defiant. Palestinians remain here. Um, and that's the power of why we're here today and who is on this call today. We are five Palestinians on this call representing all of Palestine and the diaspora, from Haifa to Jerusalem to Gaza to um, Palestinians all over the world uh, yearning and fighting to return home. And all of this, of course, is because of Israel's settler colonial project, its ethnic cleansing campaigns, its apartheid that Palestinians have been naming time and again for decades, for over a century, um, actually. And what this necessitates is an understanding that Israel is a settler colonial society that wants to overcome, that wants to subdue, that wants to erase an indigenous population. And with that, I want to take us directly to um, our first speaker here, Majd Kayal, who's on the ground, who is in Haifa. Um, he's a, a writer and a novelist. Um, Majd, I'm just going to hand it over to you. Can you talk to us about um, what's happening in, in, in Haifa and um, your analysis of the attempts at fragmentation that, um, that have failed and that continue to fail? Hi. Uh, thanks, Omaya, and thank you. Hello. Can you hear me, Sumaya? Yes, my we can hear you. Okay. So thank you first uh, for this uh, for this panel and thank you all for for hearing us. Uh, I'm here in Haifa. It's the fifth or the sorry the sixth uh, day. We are after a week of daily aggression on the Arab neighborhoods, on the Arab uh, areas of the city, uh, uh, like uh, Jaffa, like uh, Akka, like Lid and the Ramli, like all the cities uh, that. Uh, uh, a Palestinian community is living in uh, beside uh, beside the majority of uh, of the Israeli community after the displacement of these cities in 48. These cities, these Palestinian cities, were displaced, were uh, were targeted and displaced in 48, and the majority of its population uh, were expelled to Lebanon, to Jordan, to Gaza. And uh, whoever remained in these cities are still living under the oppression and under the colonial policies of partition, of of oppression, of uh, of poverty, uh, and political persecution. And uh, after 70 years of living under these conditions, uh, people are still able to resist, and people are still able to protect themselves in front of the daily aggressions of the. Israeli settlers, uh, which became settlers became a, a term not only for settlers in the West Bank or the settlers uh, in Jerusalem, not only the settlers in 60, uh, 67 areas in the, in the West Bank and Jerusalem, but settlers uh, as everyone that is not accepting and wanting to erase the Palestinian existence in Palestine, in all Palestine. So we are facing these aggressions. People are being injured. People are being uh, hurt and attacked on daily basis. 
uh, we have severe injuries and it's not only aggression of uh, Israeli groups uh, but it's aggression also of the police of the Israeli forces of the police of the special police forces of the borders police and uh, it's 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 aggression that all the Israeli uh, forces, those that are civil and those that are uh, 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 official forces, are attacking the Arab and the Palestinian community in the mixed cities. Not only in the mixed cities, but in each Arab and Palestinian village and town inside 48 territories. Uh, the demonstrations started here in support of Sheikh Jarrah and escalated after uh, the brutal aggression on Al Aqsa Mosque. And after the Israeli settlers started to arrange troops to attack Arab villages and to attack Arab neighborhoods, it became uh, a more popular movement, a wider popular movement. and. Uh, Many groups are uh, are organizing to defend their homes, to defend their neighborhoods, to defend their streets, to defend their beloved. Uh, and uh, and what is important about what is happening today, what is happening now, is that the paradigm of the Zionist colonialism that tried for 70 years to to separate the Palestinian people into small communities that each one of them has his own political will and his own uh, economical conditions and his own uh, uh, legal frame and his own citizenship status. These partition policies that the Zionism has enacting is enacting since 48 uh, are proved to be to, to fail. Now uh, we are seeing that the failure of these partition policies, we are seeing that the Palestinian people is still able to unite under one, under one struggle against the colonial system in all Palestine. We can see that Gaza, Quds, Jerusalem, and 48 territories, Haifa, and Lid, and Akka, and Jaffa, and the West Bank, Ramallah, and Nablus, uh, are still able to unite under one uh, one dream and one political will and is to to get rid of of a colonial racist regime that is uh, is is one and only target is to erase the Palestinian political existence and to separate this community and to smash this community. So today we are witnessing, in my opinion, a historical moment in which the Palestinian people is succeeding to unite again, the refugees also, uh, to join this struggle and to join this moment and to build the possibilities of, uh, of liberation, to build the possibilities of uh, a new vision uh, that, uh, that don't accept or reject the leadership that is trying to describe each territory or each Palestinian community as a political entity for itself. Uh, this movement is reject rejecting any will uh, uh, to talk about 48 Palestinians as a case for itself, to talk about Gaza as a case for itself, to talk about Jerusalem as a case for itself, and to say that there is one problem, there is one cause, which is the Palestinian cause, and the legal separation, the, the political separation that Israel established, and a lot of political Palestinian leadership accepted, is not accepted anymore. The youth movement, the, the, the people in the street, the people that are defending our home, their home, they all know that there is, there is nothing called Gaza and 48 and Jerusalem and each one is separated on its own, but it's one struggle and it's uh, it's one battle because it's in all Palestine, it's one ideology that is occupying and oppressing us. It's the ideology of racist regime called Zionism that 
don't want to see any political existence of, of, of any political or social existence of Palestinians and want has only one target is to ensure the Jewish majority uh, and the Jewish control and the Jewish domination over uh, over everyone in Palestine. So this is the situation now. We have uh, today in Haifa more than 100 detention. I just I was just in court a few minutes ago. There is more than 100 detention only in Haifa court. Uh, most of them are being uh, are uh, are people who are arrested with the severe uh, uh, injuries. Uh, there is many. There is dozens of uh, of children, uh, 40 40 years old, uh, uh, 14 sorry years old, 15 years old, 13 years old. Uh, both some of them with uh, with uh, uh, difficult uh, health conditions, but still held uh, in jail and. Uh, and the court is refusing to release them even to uh, to house arrest so uh, uh, the lawyers are are really having a hard time in trying to convince uh, the court uh, at least to release the children uh, it's not happening right now uh, there is a lot of injuries uh, many people like dozens of people in hospitals uh, a martyr in a lead. Uh, I've just heard that in the West Bank also there is seven martyrs until now. Uh, another martyr, which is, who is a refugee in Lebanon a few minutes ago, uh, was killed. Uh, this is the situation in general here. Uh, and we hope, uh, we hope that everyone will stay safe and we will be able to defend our houses, our streets, our beloved ones. Uh, we hope that Gaza uh, will have better days and uh, and that the war on Gaza, the aggression in Gaza, will stop as soon as possible. And we hope that Jerusalem will be still will will still be able to defend itself and to defend the houses of Sheikh Jarrah and the families of Sheikh Jarrah. And uh, we are having hard time, very hard, difficult times, but. Uh, also feel that this is a moment of possibility this is a moment, moment of hope to to rebuild our struggle and to rebuild uh, our hope for uh, free palestine thank you thank you Maj. thank you for for joining us from the from the streets and, and being able to take the time to talk anyone that's that's listening one of the things that Maj really pointed to is that Essentially, there's a media blackout. A lot of the stuff that he's describing that happened just in the last 24 hours is not being discussed. Um, and any way to talk about this, to tweet about this, to write about this um, is really, really key, especially right now and in the coming days as the crackdown on protesters um, intensifies. Um, and, and before I, I take it to Jihad, the other thing I want to stress that, that Majd, I think, framed really well and is important is that this is not a humanitarian crisis. Don't relegate it to the humanitarian realm. This is a political crisis and demands political solutions. Um, and with that, Jihad, Jihad is from Gaza. He's currently in the U.S. Um, and he's a, a writer. Jihad, can you can you talk to us about what's happening in Gaza? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Thank you so much for having me, and it's a great honor to join the stage with uh, Sandra, Sumaya, Majd, and of course Muhammad, who has inspired us over the past weeks. Uh, it's an honor. Um, I I have been in in the U.S. for eight years. I lived in uh, in Gaza before that for twenty years. I experienced the 2008-2009 attack on Gaza, the aggression, and I also experienced the 2012 aggression on Gaza as well. Um, I also am uh, in touch with my family who live uh, in the middle area of the Gaza Strip where uh, you know, and where they have been hearing the sounds of explosions and uh, and and bombings over the past few uh, days, uh, but not in the same intensity as the 
Palestinians who live in Gaza City or in the northern parts of uh, of Gaza City have been uh, the, nor- the northern parts of the Gaza Strip have been experiencing. Um, a lot has been said about uh, the current situation, and a lot has been published. Uh, and I think Palestinians have done their part to explain the nuances of what's happening and to explain the complexities and the history and the context um, and to uh, educate the international community and especially audiences in the West, not only about what's currently happening in Gaza, but what ha- what has been happening in uh, in other parts of Palestine, including Sheikh Jarrah in the West Bank in Jerusalem and in 48. Uh, Palestinian activism uh, has been uh, proactive in the United States over the past years. It uh, it has been reaching out to the media, mainstream media, and Palestinians uh, are an integral part of uh, social life, social, academic, intellectual, artistic life. So um, I won't repeat what we hear on the news, and I won't uh, you know reiterate even the descriptive accounts that are easy to find on social media. People can go to Twitter, can go to Facebook, and can and can see footage of explosions that are bringing down Gaza's commercial and residential buildings. Uh, they can see the large-scale bombardment campaign, the carpet bombing of entire civilian neighborhoods, uh, of entire places where people live, they can see the footage of dead children who uh, who are cut into pieces. This is all available. And I think we, we are at a moment where ignorance cannot be justified anymore. We are at a, at a moment where uh, saying, I don't know, it doesn't only means I don't care. We are at a moment where we have politicians in the United States who stand uh, on uh, the highest platforms in the country such as the Capitol Hill and and cry in tears and say we are from these people and this is how what they experience. I think the question today is a question of um, where do where do we go where do we go from here? And I think the current moment in Palestine, the current moment that Palestinians experience and the the, um, the events that have unfolded over the past weeks and days. Uh, they have to be a watershed moment in in the entire political history and in the entire uh, uh, narrative of the Palestinian story from its very beginning, from the very moments the first Jewish settlers, Zionist settlers, stepped foot in Palestine. To to and it's 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 a moment where the international community, the world, everyone, need to to take a step back and reflect and think deeply and think carefully and think thoroughly about what this moment means, not in terms of uh, a superficial humanitarian solidarity. We have that for 73 years and not in terms of superficial expressions of uh, of support or uh, which we appreciate. We appreciate so much. But this is a moment where people need to reflect about the entirety of the situation in Palestine within its historical context, within its political context, and ask themselves the question, what is what is it that is fundamentally wrong with the situation there? What is it? That, what, what are the factors, the reasons, the historical roots behind all of this? and ask themselves on this very day, the Nakba day, why for 73 years and before that for more than half a century as well, we have been witnessing the same cycle over and over again, the same violence over and over again. Why has it been accepted that Palestinians are dehumanized in the way they are dehumanized in, in, in the media and in public discourse and in, in popular culture. 
This is the time for an honest reflection and for a serious engagement with what's happening on the ground. And what's happening is something that we can talk about today on Nakba Day. That in 1948 and before 1948, the entire Zionist project that eventually led to the establishment of the State of Israel was built on a very dangerous assumption, which says that Palestinians do not have a national connection to their land. They are not rooted to their land. And this assumption, which was embraced by Zionism, continued to assume that after they were expelled from their land, after they were subjugated, as a minority in 48, after they were put under military occupation in the West Bank and Gaza, and after they were discriminated against in Jerusalem in every possible way, that these people would vanish, they would disappear. But when they did not disappear, another assumption that stemmed from the same original assumption said that Palestinians can be managed, they can be controlled, through fragmentation, through barriers, through asymmetrical experiences. We heard, we have been hearing for, for a very long time about how Palestinians receive bones. They say Palestinians in, who, who are citizens of Israel go to college and they say we send shipments of food to Gaza and they say Palestinians, Palestinians in the West Bank can work in Israel or in factories. We're sick of bones thrown at us. This is the time to wake up and to reflect and to be honest and to be decent and to have respect for the humanity of millions of Palestinians whose humanity has been disregarded, who have been ignored, who have been mocked, who have been smeared, who have been attacked, who have been jailed, who have been killed. I'm not going to talk about my brother who has a severe disability and who has epileptic seizures from the sounds of explosions, or my sister who, whose, whose entire life is measured by wars, not by years or, or milestones where she celebrated events in her life. I'm not going to talk about my other younger brother who's, who was born into this, or my, my father or my grandmother who's in her late 80s. I'm not going to cry about them today on this very call, on this very event and say, cry for them. No, this is the moment for everyone to be serious, to be decent, to wake up and to be brave and to have courage and to stand up for what's right and to be on the right side of history. We have been saying, we have been talking about Gaza for long. If all of you know here, all of you know, all of you know, when, when, when there are no military attacks on Gaza, I've been begging in the US and beyond for people and, and we say Gaza this and Gaza that and Gaza blockade and Gaza hunger and Gaza starvation and Gaza people can't travel. Enough, enough with, with justice postponed. Enough with justice delayed. This is what's, what the situation that is happening now is about in, in Gaza, in Lid, in Sheikh Jarrah, in the West Bank, in, 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 all, in, in all the uprisings by all Palestinians everywhere. So, and, and please forgive me for, 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 for being angry, but this, this is the, the, the time. This is the time for the entire world, for Britain and for the United States and, and for the European Union. And for the citizens of those countries. 
to do the right thing. And it's all on all of us to protect Gaza and to protect Palestinians in Lid and Nazareth and Haifa and everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Jihad. And to all of you listening, I hope people are taking note of what the next step is, what, what action you're going to, what campaign you're planning. Um, next, uh, we're going to hear from Hamad al Kurd, Hamad al Sheikh Jarrah, Hamad a writer and, and a poet. Hamad. Um, hello, everybody. I just want to say that it's an honor to be on this panel with you all, but it's also quite um, hard to be on a panel with everything unfolding. Um, right now in Sheikh Jarrah, I am talking to you as settlers and Mustaribin are shooting live ammunition at protesters, um, as seven people have already been murdered by Israeli sadistic forces, and as many people, over 100 people have been killed in the Gaza Strip at the hands of Israeli terror. Um, what's evident for us today and what has been evident for me since my life began is that the Nakba has never stopped. It's never um, ended. And I, and I know this because not only our grandfathers and grandmothers were thrown out in the Nakba, not only were our own homes thrown out in like the past decades, not only our homes today are being um, stolen, our homes in Sheikh Zarah are being stolen today, but because I cannot speak to a Palestinian refugee, no matter the geography, without feeling their yearning to come back home. That is one indication of how strong the Nakba is. Um, I don't want to, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to talk a little bit about Sheikh Zarrah, but I also want to say something. Um, I am not in the business of humanization, and I'm not in the business of convincing, and I don't think, um, I think if your stance on Palestine is anti-Palestinian, then you are racist, period. That's it. There is no shortage of um, footage from Palestine in the past two days and in the past 73 years that shows Israel using terrorism, apartheid, settler colonialism, whatever it can to terrorize Palestinians. The idea here is not about media exposure. It's not about um, proving who's the aggressor. The idea here is that there is the truth and there's a system of governments, diplomats, media personnel who are complicit in the crimes against Palestinians that erase the truth. Every single day I am hearing about, first of all, I'm experiencing this firsthand. Every single interview I get gets edited. I can't even call myself, I can't even call the system I am living under occupation, even though that's what international law calls it, even though it's no secret that we are living under military occupation. The word occupation gets censored out of my interviews, let alone saying things like apartheid or settler colonialism. So many of my friends get used and exploited by mainstream media. Um, and have their consent manufactured and used for sound bites to advance an anti-Palestinian agenda. Even here, inside occupied Palestine, so many of my friends are getting calls from weird numbers that are saying that they are in Israeli intelligence and they're asking them that they're, they're telling my friends that they're going to be prosecuted, they're going to be followed, they're going to be imprisoned should they not stop reporting on what's going on in the ground. In addition to that, I'm sure you've seen the hundreds and thousands of posts that have been taken down from Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and other avenues. I've been trying to post about protests happening in support of Palestine, and they have all been censored by Twitter. Our Facebook post to save Sheikh Jarrah, which housed 132,000 members, has been disabled permanently, I think. So there's a clear, clear move um, to erase Palestinians, to shut them up. And it's your moral obligation as a person. And oftentimes it is your professional obligation to ensure that that erasure is not upheld. So what I'm about to say is nothing but a fact. There is no hyperbole in what I'm about to say about Sheikh Jarrah. And I'm not here to convince anybody. I am here to report my truth. And I'm expecting you as a human being to uphold your ethics and your moral obligations and your professional obligations and do something about it. 
Okay. This is what's been going on in Sirzurah in the past, I don't know, 30 years, but also in the past few weeks, um, we have been seeing intense police force, um, intense police terrorism against Palestinians who are just standing there, simply standing there and protesting ethnic cleansing. This is going on against everybody. We have been seeing journalists suppressed, beaten, assaulted, um, medics forced to leave Sheikh Jarrah, all while Israeli settlers are allowed to walk into our neighborhood without questions. They're allowed to carry their rifles and walk into our homes without question. Last night we went we went to sleep in our work clothes. I went to sleep in our sho in my shoes because I didn't know when settlers were about to invade my home. They were in my yard and they were armed and they were in my yard until three and four in the morning and I had to go to sleep in my clothes because I didn't know when I had to wake up. This is a constant um, paranoia that we have to live that we have to live under, but it's also a constant fact of state settler terrorism and state settler collusion. The only reason why this is happening to us in Sheikh Jarrah, why this is happening to us in Silwan, why this is happening to us in the Old City, why this is happening to us in the South Hebron Hills, in Isawiyah, wherever the place in Jerusalem or nearing Jerusalem or in the West Bank, is because these settlers are emboldened by the state. Because the state also constitutes of settlers. It's not a controversial equation. It's not complicated or hard to understand. Palestinians have been saying, also history has been saying, geography has been saying, topography has been saying, architecture has been saying. For the, pa for the past 73 years, there has been a foreign entity that invaded the land, ethnically cleansed its people, destroyed its architecture and built a new one. And so all of this violence we are seeing today is a direct result of that. I think 73 years is enough. I feel like Palestinians spend their own their entire lives doing PowerPoint presentations on what's going on. I think it's enough. This presentation has ended. It's time for the audience to get up and do something. I am only I'm super young still and I can't do this anymore. I I like I'm being honest with everybody. I can't do this anymore. I'm not your teacher. I am not, yeah, we're not doing, I don't know, like, I'm going off script here, not that there's a script, but I'm not anybody's teacher. It's quite sickening to see my father, who's about to be 80 years old, repeating the same story over and over and over again to diplomats, to international solidarity activists, to people. Um, it's What's happening is that we are, our homeland is literally being swallowed whole by Israeli colonialism and World governments are complicit in it. So it is up to us, people, people in the world. It is up to us to go and make noise around our governments. It's up to us to go to these embassies and chant and protest and bo and also boycott because there's no other solution. We can't expect the United States, who's not only supplying Israel with $4 billion a year in, in fucking death cult money to come and save us, um, because they're also doing the, their wars of their own. They're also contributing to the blockade of Yemen, to the genocide of Yemen. They're contributing to killing people in Afghanistan. They have killed over a million people in Iraq. These governments that we're asking to save us are genocidal and fascist within their own right, independently of their support of Israel. That's something that we must understand. So we can't ask. We must force them to give us what we want. And this is true of all countries that are supportive of Israel. Um, so again, please, please, if you're listening to this and you're new to the Palestinian cause or the quote unquote conflict, please interrogate it within yourself and ask, why is it that um, a teenager and an 80 year old woman are still t telling the same story over and over again? My grandmother was 103 years old when she died, Rifq al Kurd, Allah And I love that you all said Allah Thank you. And she, when she was, when she was like in her last months, she didn't remember who I was, even though I was her favorite grandkid, obviously. She didn't remember who I was. Um, she didn't remember who my dad was. She didn't know where she was, but she continuously talked about the Nakba, continuously talked about the horrors she saw in the Nakba. I don't want to be demented and on my deathbed and the only thing I can remember 
is the pain and harrowing crimes and atrocities of the Israeli occupation. The world owes it to me. I'm so sorry, this is so entitled, but the world owes it to me and my generation to live in, in peace and in dignity and in liberation. Um, and also, you know, Sheikh Zarrah has taught me something um, very clear that for settlers to come in broad daylight with the help of the state and be able to take over our homes with no international reaction on a governmental level means and explains how the Nakba happened so swiftly, how over 800 Palestinian villages and towns were destroyed so swiftly, how tens of thousands of Palestinians were slaughtered so swiftly. Um, this is not about convincing people of the truth. Like uh, Jihad said, you know, there's videos of limbs everywhere for you to consume and use, but this is not about that. This is about finally deciding to take a stance against settler colonialism in Palestine, finally reconciling within yourself that this is not a complicated issue, that this is not a conflict. Rather, this is something that should be a litmus test for your moral compass, um, not only for Palestinian liberation, but for all liberation all across the world. Just because Israeli colonialism has managed to behave within seemingly independent institutions, and in a pseudo democratically fashion, in a pseudo democratic fashion, does not mean that it's not colonialism. Um, in Sheikh Jarrah, in Silwan, in Isawiya, in the South Hebron Hills, everywhere, everywhere that is that we're experiencing settler state collusion, we are being reminded of the Nakba's elusiveness. We are being reminded of the Nakba's explicitness, and. We can no longer wait for the world to act. We must take um, things within our own hands. If I may have a call to action, sorry, I've been rambling. If I may have a call to action for you all, please boycott um, Israel. That means Israelis, Israeli products, Israeli artists, Israeli songs, Israeli everything, Israeli breath, Israeli oxygen, whatever. Boycott all of it, sanction all of it, divest from all of it. Um, your Israeli friends, all of it, just boycott it because they're all complicit in our oppression. Khalas. Um, and then the second thing is protest. Please, tomorrow is Nakba Day, please protest. I said earlier in a live jokingly that you should cancel your wedding and protest. But honestly, the situation is so urgent that like cancel your mother and go protest. Who cares? Like it's it's about time that we take onto the streets once and for all because our, our blood is not cheap and our martyrs are not cheap and we should no longer live under this oppression. And I appreciate you listening to me and it's such an honor to be here with Sumaya Sandra Mast and Jihad. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jihad. Um, I'm, I'm imagining the ovations um, if we were all in, in person, which sooner than later we will be um, across Palestine and the diaspora. Before I turn it to Sandra to introduce what Sandra is going to talk about, which is exactly what you were saying, Hamad, like, what do we do now? What is our what is our action right now? But there's something that Hamad said that I think is really key, which is that we're at a point where there's there's no middle ground. There's no I'm with Palestine, but there's either you're with or you're against. There's no temporary solution. There's no temporary peace. It's about an entire systemic change and an end to all of Israel's settler colonial project. I actually want to take 20 seconds to do this, and all five of you on the call do this with me. Everyone at home that's watching, there are I think over 1,500 people that registered, say it out loud right now, say it out loud, Israel is a settler colonial state. Say it, Israel is a settler, settler colonial state. <laughs> say it in your home, because tomorrow that's what you need to be chanting out in the street. That followed by sanctions on Israel. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to, to Sandra, um, Executive Director of the Adala Justice Project. Thank you, Samaya. Um, Samaya brings fire to all the rallies. Um, you should look up her speech in New York uh, a few days ago. Uh, thank you, Mohammed Jihad and Mejd. Um, you know, you all are, are like family. We've been struggling uh, together. Um, Mohammed is still a baby, so we haven't had a lot of time to work together, but I'm older than all of the people on this panel. And I, I got my political education under the first intifada uh, when I was able to, to be in Palestine. Um, I'm, I'm exiled from Palestine. Um, my 
father was a 67 refugee, came to the U.S. in 66 temporarily, and um, when Israel occupied 67 lands, um, he wasn't he wasn't registered. And this was another way that Palestinians were, were forced out, people who were studying, people who were away for work, um, people who were absent, people who left temporarily for safety um, were denied their right to return. So he only can go back as a guest um, because he had the, the advantage of, of securing a U.S. passport. I've lost that advantage um, because of my activism um, and so the last time I tried to go into Palestine, I was I was I was thrown into a prison and and sent away. And I and I haven't been there in many many years. Um, so my heart, watching these pictures and watching these videos, is is certainly there. And I wish that I could be on the streets of Haifa, that I could be in Sheikh Jarrah. Um, that's that's where I want to be, and that's where we are going back to. Uh, the scenes that we've seen this morning of. Um, people rushing to the borders from Jordan, from Lebanon, from Jalan, show you, right, that this isn't going away. Um, Jihad tweeted um, yesterday, I believe, that it, it, it's 1947. We aren't a divided people anymore. We're, we're one people. We have come together in this uprising, and it's been beautiful, beautiful to watch. And at the same time, while the ground is shifting in Palestine, we're seeing the ground shift tremendously in the U.S. We're seeing um, solidarity coming from broad swaths of the left um, and from more centrist voices um, that are saying exactly what Samaya um, said. Israel is a settler colonial state. And understanding that this is not about you know, some solution, the, some imaginary solution of two states, this fragmentation, further fragmentation of our lands. And even one state is a generous offer. What we're talking about is a total decolonization of Palestine. We're talking about ending Zionism, which necessitates that Gaza remain penned in, that necessitates that Mej remains a target inside of it, you know, as a citizen that Muhammad is targeted for, for forced dispossession from his home. These are the things that must end. Zionism must end because Samaya, who has never been able to go to Palestine, needs to go home. These are the things that we're talking about. So it's not about equal rights. We're talking about a, a much larger project of decolonization. We here in the US have a lot of complicity in everything that is happening. And as Muhammad said, it's been very clear from Palestinians, the call is to boycott. So I don't want to hear any more excuses that it's difficult to you know, speak up in your university about these programs, or it's difficult to boycott an artist or to, um, to call out uh, these kinds of things that are happening, that where your city is training with Isra Israeli police or engaging in environmental projects with Israeli technology. Enough is enough. You have an opportunity in every city in this country to launch a campaign at the municipal level to say we will not engage with these companies. We will not engage with Israel in any shape. What we also are asking is that you demand that Palestinians have the right to resist, that you flank us when we're being attacked for our BDS positions that you flank us when we're being charged with terrorism for simply standing up for our rights, that you flank us when we're being accused of anti-Semitism. We need you to get past all of this propaganda that's been poisoning this nar our narrative. Our, our narrative is very clear as we've made that, if we, as we've presented today. So we, we need you. And I'll, I'll just close finally to say that we're calling on sanctions. You know, yesterday in the House, there was a special session. Um, members of the Progressive Caucus came forward to talk about what's happening in Palestine. Um, we heard a lot of really strong statements, but we did not hear the word sanctions. And I promise you that we're pushing for that. Um, and we need you to take action. So in the chat, you'll find um, an action call that 
Adala Justice Project and the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights have put out. Um, we don't believe that Congress will save us, but we do believe that with pressure, we can shift the way that this country thinks about Palestine. And I promise you, every time we talk to a member of Congress, they ask, what are the numbers? What are the polling numbers? What do they show? And so we need to show that people in the U.S. do not want to be complicit, do not want our tax dollars going to fund this violence anymore. Thank you, Sandra. The call for sanctions is the call that's coming out on the ground from Palestine as well. A call for everyone anywhere in the world, whatever country you're in, whatever city, to call on your government to support and apply sanctions on Israel, um, to call for boycotts, to call for divestment campaigns. And that doesn't just mean the government, right? That means your unions, your workplaces, your campuses, your grocery stores, um, your local shops, every single level. Israel's not doesn't operate in isolation. Israel is part of a globalized system and it is very integrated into it. And there are many, many ways to dismantle what it's what it's doing, to dismantle and uh, specifically to affect it materially, to stop the flow of profit of money to Israel. And if you're in the United States in particular, that means you, because that's $3.8 billion a year. Right? That props up what Israel is doing. It props it up financially and it props it up politically by giving cover and allowing Israel to act with impunity. And that's something we can change. We have the potential to change that. It's not a theoretical thing. Our actions can actually stop that material flow of money. And that's what South Africa taught us. And so the time to do that is now. Time now is not to go and understand nuances of history. The time right now is to go out and join one of these campaigns or to call for one of these campaigns and to understand that, yes, there are sacrifices that you will have to make, but that's the point, right? That's why it's a freedom struggle. If it were easy, we would have won it a long time ago. It's not easy, but there's more of us doing it and our movement is growing. And it's the time, the time to be brave and to join all of us because the reality is it's not just Palestinians that aren't free without a free Palestine. No one is free without a free Palestine. You are not free if Palestine is not free. Even if you think you are, you are not. Our freedom is connected. Palestine will not be liberated in isolation. It's something that Arabs across the region have taught us again and again, that Palestine is the heart of all of our struggles against capitalism, against imperialism, against the dictators across the world, and against the different forms of imperialism, no matter what flag they're flying. And that is what we're going to leave you here today with. Remember, Israel is a settler colonial state. Repeat it to yourself over and over and over and over again until it's stuck. And it's what you're singing in the shower. Repeat it to your kids. Have them chant it at the playground. Because this is an urgent time. This is not about let me wait and see what I can do next week. This is about today and tomorrow and Sunday. Because people are dying right now. They are dying they are being bombed and they are being shot and they are being jailed and they're being exiled right now. So the time is now. Take that urgency with you as we end this call. Um, and thank you so much, uh, Majd and Hamad and Jihad and Sandra and everybody watching. Um, and I hope that you all are following everything that's happening and following the individuals here online for updates. And um, the the there in the in the chat there's uh, links to follow so please do click those and and take action and thank you Haymarket Books for for hosting this and to the groups who um, helped organize this Adada Justice Project U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights um, Center for Constitutional Rights Uprooted and Rising and JVP thank you all.
يشد يشد بي البعد أنا في أفيائك نثرين أنا زهر شوك أنا الورد أنا لا أنساك فلسطين ويشد يشد بي البعد أنا في أفيائك نثرين أنا زهر شوك أنا الورد سندك ندك الأسوار نستلهم ذاك 